Hey there, it's Dr. Justin, and today's video is gonna be comparing adrenal fatigue to adrenal failure, or Addison's disease. I think this is a worthwhile video. I've gotten this question probably four or five times in the last week by patients. Patients have come back on a cortisol rhythm test with adrenal fatigue, and we'll kind of go into that in a bit. And they got scared and they went to their endocrinologist and said, hey, I have adrenal issues, I have adrenal fatigue. And fatigue to the endocrinologist kind of is code word for adrenal failure and they look at that as Addison's disease or a pathology where the adrenal glands cannot produce enough cortisol. It's a pathological level. And the doctor came back with certain testing that we'll go over in a second and said, no, you're fine. There's no problems, adrenal fatigue is, is not an issue with you. Whoever told you you have adrenal fatigue is wrong. Again, we wanna compare and contrast when we're looking at adrenal disease or Addison's disease, we're looking at pathology, which again is, is on more on the rare side, right? Small percent of the population, the single digits percentage-wise, are gonna be in the pathological adrenal failure Addison's type of disease level. While we have a much larger percent of the population that's gonna be in the adrenal fatigue camp, and when I, let's say adrenal fatigue, I also wanna add in HPA access dysfunction, because it's not the idea that the adrenals are tired, kind of like you would be after exercising, it's that the feedback signal that goes to the adrenals is dysregulated. Think of the thermostat in your house being broken, right? And the heater not working, or the air conditioner not working. You wouldn't say, well that air conditioner or that heater needs a tune-up, it's fatigued, it's broken. You would say, no, it's the thermostat that's broken, and we have to fix the thermostat. Again, with the body, because there's so many interwoven parts, we always have to fix both the upstream and the downstream. And I'm gonna break that down for you in today's Chalk Talk. So adrenal fatigue is gonna be on this side. Adrenal failure will be on this side. I'm gonna compare and contrast the two. So in normal physiology, we have corticotropic releasing hormone. Cortico meaning the brain. So the paraventricular nucleus in the hypothalamus part of the brain stimulate or produces this hormone called CRH, corticotropic releasing hormone. That then goes downstream to the pituitary and that stimulates adrenal corticotropic releasing hormone, ACTH. That ACTH goes in our bloodstream and then hits our adrenal glands and stimulates cortisol production. Okay, we're even gonna see DHEA production as well. We have cortisol and we have also have DHEA. And this is how our normal physiology works. Now, I'm gonna break it down here a little bit differently, but when we have cortisol, for instance, cortisol comes out in a circadian fashion, right? It's like a roller coaster ride. It's higher in the morning and then drops throughout the day, just like so. So we'll have this nice rhythm here. I'm gonna draw it out so it makes sense. We have this nice rhythm here where cortisol is higher in the morning, lower in the afternoon, lower, and then lowest at night. So you can see we have this nice, wonderful taper here, just like this. All right, it's this nice taper. And that's what we wanna be seeing with our patients. So it's not just the amount of cortisol, it's the rhythm as well. And I'm gonna come back to why that's so important. And then DHEA is gonna be our anti-aging hormone. This is gonna help buffer stress, buffer inflammation. It also helps balance and support the immune system as well. Very, very important. Now let's look at adrenal failure, otherwise known as Addison's disease. Let's, let's write that up there. And a famous person with Addison's disease is our former president, JFK, John F. Kennedy. He had Addison's disease, low cortisol functioning. And if you go look at pictures of him in the early 50s to when he ran for president in 1960, for if you will, um, one of the main contributing factors of why he won the presidency, if you look at pictures of him in the 50s, he looks very gaunt and sunken in face. They just came out with synthetic cortisol at that time. So him being on synthetic cortisol allowed him to gain weight and his face actually filled in. If you look at old pictures, you can see the difference. A little side note there. So again, physiology again, corticotropic releasing hormone, ACTH talks to the adrenals, and then we have cortisol output. So when you go to your standard endocrinologist and they're ruling out adrenal failure or Addison's disease, what they're doing is they're typically giving you an ACTH stimulating compound. It's like a synthetic compound. And they're gonna increase ACTH. And what they're looking for is they're looking to see how the adrenals respond. So they'll typically already have cortisol already measured at baseline, they'll give you this ACTH and they wanna see if the cortisol goes up. And what they're inferring here 
if giving this stimulation doesn't cause the adrenal glands to produce more cortisol, something is wrong with the adrenals. And in the case of Addison's disease, it's typically an autoimmune issue. And actually, here's the connection between the thyroid and Addison's disease. About one third of patients that have Addison's disease or adrenal failure also have an autoimmune thyroid issue because it all comes back to the immune system, right? So it's gonna be the immune system most of the time I'm gonna write immune function most of the time, that's gonna be attacking and destroying that adrenal gland. So basically what's happening here is they're giving ACTH, that's like giving you a whip and you're on your horse and you're seeing if that horse goes faster when you whip it. So typically, you know, I'm not a big fan of animal cruelty at all, I love my animals, but you whip that animal, right, it should go faster, that's kind of the mindset. And if it doesn't go faster when you whip it, there's, that's what they're saying is adrenal failure. Okay, they're saying it's not producing enough. So that's one way of looking at it. They'll also just run a baseline cortisol. They'll run a baseline serum cortisol in the morning and they'll see how high it is. Typically, you're gonna see cortisol in the very low, low numbers for them to even say there's adrenal issues there. And they'll almost always run an ACTH stim test as well. And they may even run adrenal antibodies to see how high the antibody destruction is regarding the adrenal tissue. And then we'll also start seeing problems with sodium and potassium. Typically what we see is this, we see sodium dropping out. So sodium actually goes high. Excuse me, I'm gonna write that one more time. Sodium actually goes low. Sodium goes low and then potassium actually goes high, just like that. And that's one of the things we'll start to see on a blood test. And we'll even start to see it here using a functional range. We'll start to see sodium dropping out just a little bit, and we may even see potassium just start to go a little bit high. So we can use functional blood chemistries to even pick this up in the adrenal fatigue side before it becomes an issue. So conventional side, we'll look at ACTH stimulation test. We'll look at a serum cortisol, a serum, protein bound. Over here, we're looking at a free cortisol, much different because only 2% of the hormones free. It has a physiological effect, meaning 2% is free. It doesn't have a cap on it, right? This is total, all right? It can't bind into the receptor site like so. But if we take it off, now the hormone's free and now it can actually bind into a receptor site. So we're looking at free cortisol over here where your conventional endocrinologist is looking at serum or total cortisol. So it's really important that you compare apples to apples here. All right, so let's break it down here. When we're looking at adrenal fatigue, we're looking at rhythm. We're looking at one, two, three, four different samples of cortisol. We're looking at free cortisol. One of the things we're really trying to rule out is not just adrenal fatigue, but also HPA access dysfunction. HPA dysfunction. That's really important because that is gonna be one of the main driving factors of why your adrenals are not working optimally. So we put people on an adrenal program to support the rhythm, and we may even give upstream herbs to support the signaling up here to get the HPA access on track. Here, there's no, we're not really looking at HPA access dysfunction in the conventional model. It's a very much a pathological based focus, very myopic on the disease, where we are broadening our horizon and really looking for dysfunction uh, at a functional level. Again, functional medicine is very different and unique because we're trying to re restore physiology, not treat disease. Now, we're gonna be using natural botanicals, maybe even some precursor hormones, maybe even small amounts of DHEA to support healing. We may even use small amounts of cortisol support, herbs like licorice, um, precursor support like pregnenolone. We may even use herbs like eleuthero, rhodiola, uh, ginsengs, and ashwagandha to support the brain and the HPA axis. Over here, the model is typically hydrocortisone or cortef, these are synthetic or even bioidentical cortisol medications to bring up cortisol naturally. And again, if you have super low cortisol, that may be very life-saving for you. So again, over here, blood test, single sample cortisol in the morning, ACTH stem test, and autoimmune testing here. The wonderful thing about doing a salivary cortisol like we're doing here is that we can measure cortisol levels and we're not sticking a needle, right? That needle is gonna create a stress response. You know, who gets excited to go to the doctor to get a needle you know, stuck in your body? Typically that creates an adrenal response and may even exacerbate cortisol, giving you a false, 
a falsely elevated level and you may be in the normal range but without that needle stimulation you may fall short so the wonderful thing here we're looking at free fraction cortisol and we're also looking at it in a way where we're not going to be stimulating it through a needle here we're going to have the needle stimulation as well so one's functional one is you know i'd say 50 plus percent of the population have some degree of adrenal fatigue, whether it's low adrenal, right, super low cortisol, which is where we're looking at with a stage three adrenal, to our stage one adrenal, which is hyper functioning of cortisol and may have a lot of anxiety, tired but wired, um, may feel good energy wise, but may not feel balanced mood wise. So in this video here, we're really just focusing more on the stage three, the cortisol that's on the lower side. And when we're talking low, typically we're talking about less than 23 units of cortisol, less than 23 units of cortisol on an adrenal cortisol rhythm test. And here we're talking in the low single digits on a conventional test. So again, I hope you're able to get your brain around adrenal fatigue versus adrenal failure. One's pathology, one's a functional imbalance involving the brain and the adrenals. And when we connect it all, it always affects the thyroid too. I talked about how thyroid autoimmunity is involved. And it's interesting to note that giving thyroid hormone is even contraindicated if you have adrenal failure because thyroid hormone will actually lower your cortisol level. So we always wanna work on the adrenals first thyroid seconds. So take a look at this. That'll give you the ability to wrap your head around the pathology versus the disease. And if you think you have adrenal fatigue symptoms, brain fog, uh, weight gain, um, energy issues, focus, mood, anxiety, inability to put on muscle, sleep problems, mood issues, female hormone or male hormone issues, click on screen or reach out below so you can get your adrenals assessed and get a game plan of how to move forward and help them get better. Again, this is Dr. Justin here signing off. Have a great day.